service. And if we present our body as a living sacrifice, it ought to be consumed by fire. I cannot stretch the more on this one. I cannot stretch more on the. If you present your body that is your living sacrifice and that is accepted as a reasonable service, your reasonable service is not what you reason for, is what God has approved of. When that sacrifice has been accepted, God says it is your reasonable service and God who has accepted your sacrifice will let on that sacrifice a seal of his fire. How many of you wants to be not only accepted in that sacrifice but how many of you wants to have the fire of the Lord? Leave your hand if you want to have the fire of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is not by the will of a man that you will change things. By which your will, God can take that will, turn it to become something that he will place back in you from his will so that your heart will have the will of God and you will be so blended that your will will be transformed by the will. Are you what I'm saying? He said, for it is me who gives you the will to do my... In... Hey, Jesus Christ. In the... God, Lord. Say, Lord, help me. The reason why I say, say, Lord, help me is that you step to the Lord, Lord, help me see. Lord, help me understand. Because something you do not understand, you cannot function with, you cannot operate by, you cannot flow in. The one who comes who will baptize you with fire. And your sacrifice is accepted when you have received the fire. You have to tell to yourself, I do not want to be a church attendant. Hallelujah. Tell to yourself, I do not want to be a church attendant. I do not want to be a church attendant. But a sacrifice that is reasonable unto God. of the Lord there are two things that manifest listen carefully in the presence of the Lord there are always two things that manifest what are they demons and and the spirit of God I read again in the presence of the Lord there are always two things that manifest demons and the spirit of God demons manifest because in his presence they are to go away the spirit manifests because in his presence you are on fire demon or the spirit manifest I don't know <laughs> I, I don't I am a candidate 
for the manifestation of the spirit of God. Hey, I am a candidate for the manifestation of the spirit of the Lord. Last Sunday we say that what do you need in order to operate? You cannot go without the anointing. Uh -huh. So if your reasonable sacrifice is accepted, you receive in turn fire for the anointing. And the anointing is what will help you with everything. With everything. With your decisions. With your work. With your ministry. With your family. With your life. You do not want to be so much acquainted to Jesus Christ that you now no longer see the Spirit of God. Let me repeat again. You do not want to be so much acquainted or familiar. Hallelujah. To the Lord Jesus that should no longer see the spirit of God manifest. The Bible says, he went among his people. Hallelujah. And how many miracles did he do there? Was Jesus Christ not able to do miracles? Now put it this way. The one who's greater than all is limited by the actions of the people. This one, it is, it is deep. Huh? The one who does not need your permission in order to create you, he limits himself out of your permission. If you don't permit God to operate, he cannot violate you. And yet he is willing to Operate is willing to manifest, is willing to function in your life tremendously. He's so willing to function in your life tremendously that see, you are still breathing. And tell me that you're breathing just by a random chance. Because random chance did take some people out. You are not spared of being taken out. Are you following what I'm saying? And as you are breathing, he's giving you that opportunity so that you become an element of his fire in order for other people also catch the fire. That's why I say you must refuse to be just a church attendant. You must receive, re refuse to be just a by product of Christianity. He did not bring Christianity so that uh, we become a byproduct of it, but that we be the product of it. Fire helps you consume inside of you the things that are not of God. Fire helps you consume the things that are not of God out of you. But it also helps purify the things that are meant for God. So every goal that is inside of you that ought to be pure will be purified by fire.
And the more it is purified by fire, the more shinier, shinier thou become. Have you seen gold put in high fire who became ashes? Have you seen gold put on high fire who changed its nature and became stone? But if a stone contains gold inside and that stone is put on the high fire, the stone will crumble and the gold will come out. The stone that is in your heart must to be crumbled. So that the gold of Christ in you shines brighter. But you have to know how to present your body as a living sacrifice to be your reasonable service. So that the Lord utilizes and puts on you the hand that he wants to put on you for the fire he wants to put on you and then make out of you an instrument of his glory if not you will become acquainted to the Lord Jesus you will become familiar to him And when you become familiar to the Lord Jesus, your life becomes glacial. Uh, glacial. Frozen. Frozen. Say, Lord, Lord deliver, me deliver me from every familiar spirit. Every familiar spirit. Deliver my soul. From any familiar spirit. So I become not familiar to you. Deliver me from every familiar spirit. So I be not familiar to you. I present my soul, God. Put your fire inside. Burn inside of me and cause me to be shinier and brighter for thy glory. It is by the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. That the apostles and the disciples continued and persevered. It is by the Spirit of the Lord that they have continued and they have held and they have continued and pressed on. It is only by the Spirit of God. And he says, I am at the door. And I knock, if any inside heareth my voice, and open up, I will come in, and dine with him, and him with me. And I will make out of him my dwelling place, and out of his life I will cause rivers of living water to flow. And I shall baptize him in my spirit by my fire and cause him to be an instrument of my kingdom for my glory for receiving from me by Kosefreta Bata the anointing that breaketh the yoke. For it is by the will of God that we are alive. It is by the will of God that we are breathing. 
It is by the will of God that we are functioning. It is by the will of God that we are advancing. And to be a peculiar people unto the Lord, I must separate from the world. I must separate from the things that don't honor him. I must separate from all the things that will hinder me to enter his kingdom, to enter his throne, to enter his court. So I do need a prophet. I do need need to get away I do need to be transformed I do need to be changed I do need to be set apart I do need to be completely also fricated brondoka My spirit need to be more busy us unto the pleasing God that doing anything that is outside of the will of the Lord. For by seeking his will, he blesses you, he blesses you with his goodness. By letting your mind be transformed, not according to the current world, but according to his will, he causes you to enter his rest. For he said, what shall profit it unto a man? What shall profit it unto the man to gain the whole world, to pursue after your dreams and still be empty of his dream? What shall profit it unto a soul to seek after the things of this world, to seek after the comfort of this world, while your soul is not comforted into God your Savior? But when thy soul entereth into his kingdom, when thy soul entereth into the holies of his holies, you have and shall receive every benefit of your soul. For thy soul shall not forget all its benefit. For God said, seek thee first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. You out there to seek righteousness. You out there to desire righteousness. You out to live for righteousness. You out to pray for righteousness. You out to love righteousness. You out to desire righteousness. But so it shall baptize you by his spirit and cause his anointing inside of you uh, to break the yoke that takes it away uh, the desire of God in thy heart uh, and cause his righteousness uh, to get you uh, and place you on the right path and then he will add to the benefit of your soul what you're seeking for and when he add on the soul and uh, on the benefit of your soul, he says he add it without sorrow. If you seek it not God's righteousness, you will have sorrow into what you have. You will have sorrow into what you seek for. But by the Spirit of God, by the end of God, when He adds on you what He has a design, plan just for you, He says, I add it without sorrows. What comes from God helps you worship God. And let me say it again. What comes from God helps you worship God. What comes from Pharaoh make you a bond 
what comes from Pharaoh makes you a slave. Let me say it again. What comes from God helps you worship God. If you do not put away what prevents you to enter his presence, that same thing will swallow you and cause you to be familiar to the spirit of the Lord. remember you are not put on this earth to only live by go by no you are put on this earth to fulfill purpose you are put on this earth to fulfill purpose and to fulfill it mightily and to fulfill it beautifully The name of the Lord is what saves. The name of the Lord is what sets free. The name of the Lord is what delivers. You are to take for yourself to do a mea culpa, a round through of your spirit and say, Lord, this is where I need your fire. This is where I need your anointing. This is where I need your hand. This is where I need your touch. This is where I need your help. This is where I need your guidance. This is where I need your instructions. This is where I need your instructions. So that I become fulfilled and I fulfill the purpose of God in my life. I need to fulfill the purpose of God in my life. For he says, an account shall be given for every idle world word that we have done and said. He says, an account shall be given. I need to fulfill the purpose of God. Whether I do it through my family, whether I do it through my home, whether I do it through my church, whether I do it through my ministry, whether I do it through my marriage, whether I do it through my businesses, whether I do it through my job, I need to fulfill the purpose of the Lord. For it says where a man's heart is, there is his treasure. And where your treasure is, there is your heart. A sister of mine told me one time, she, she said, she said, I don't understand. How do you keep yourself in the ways of God? She says it seems difficult to keep oneself in the way of God. 
And she asked me the question and I said, you see, you cannot keep yourself in the ways of God. Because the word of God says the things of God are not given to the carnal mind. Hallelujah. So you cannot keep yourself in the ways of God. However, if you exchange your burden, hallelujah, with the one of Christ, he will keep you in his will. The Bible says he is able to keep you from. He is able to keep you from falling. Hallelujah. 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 God of Hallelujah. Amen. Today we have a baptism. Amen. Today we have baptism by the grace of God. So today is a Sunday. Hallelujah. So what I want you to do is to make a decision of what type of baptism you want to receive. Whether you are baptized by water, whether you are baptized by anointing, whether you are baptized by fire. is a baptism for everybody. Hallelujah. Even though our brother will be baptized on the water, it is an opportunity for all of us. The Bible says there was, I, I want to give you a, a picture, okay? And then I will build from that picture. So we understand the doctrine of it, but I want to give you a picture. The Bible says that there was an angel that was coming into the pool of Bethesda to stir up the pool. That whoever was jumping in first was what? Healed from all, hallelujah. If the person jump in that pool and then he has, I don't know, cancer, the cancer will not be healed and left out the seizure. You know what I'm saying? What he ought to do is his body has to go in that pool. And when it gets in first, now, what first in that case is you have many people around. So all of them, when they see the thing, all of them phew, plunge in. And yet there is somebody, the tip of his hair has touched it first. Hallelujah. Or the skin of his toe has touched it first. It was not a pool where you were in line. And everybody now has to go by line. No, 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 no. It was a pool where everybody was just like this. Those who could not be like this, and who were lame, they were also on the mat. But the Bible says, whosoever gets in first was healed completely from his diseases. Now, I want to build from that picture to explain to you why it is important to utilize this day as a pool.
when the spirit of god came oh lord jesus help me when the spirit of god came upon the disciple in the upper room there were 120 hallelujah so whosoever whosoever were there and available received that fire but they were not the only believers hallelujah we know they were not the only believers but not all of them receive lord say lord help me lord help me oh lord jesus God is the God of the universe, right? But he appoints a place for him to manifest. Let me repeat again. He's the God of the universe, but he appoints a place for his manifestation. And those who believe in him, who were not in that place are you getting it while is able to just spread it upon all the universe which is his making his creation he appoint out of that universe a place and in that place he pour out his spirit And those who were believers who were not in that place, the Bible said that there were more than 500 brethren who saw the Lord resurrected. Hallelujah. So I oftentimes said that if we do the simple math, 500 at least, because it was more. So 500 at least minus one, uh, uh, 120, you have how many? 380, more than the majority. Who saw the resurrection of the Lord. Who also believed in the Lord. Who were baptized certainly in the name of the Lord. Ah, this, this one, if you understand this one, it will trigger in you something particular. Because the mistake of the Christian is I can go where I want to receive what I want but with God is go where I sent you to receive what I will give you are you what I'm saying so if he sent you east and you go west even if he's the God of the universe you will receive nothing and God gives when you follow instruction he said do two step and you say okay well i'm gonna do three that's good but following the instruction is the first step to receive from the lord people who don't follow instruction <laughs> the difficulty they have is a rebellious spirit that's all but the rebellious spirit is not about anything else is about God because when many of them they say okay this is the law if you do this or you put you in jail many of them they don't do it are you what I'm saying so following instruction is one of the key to receive what God says he will give you if he says go left go left so building from the pool of Bethesda there was an instruction is that first you must be present in the area and the vicinity of the pool that's first thing second instruction is that you must not look for somebody to help you get in <laughs> because the person also trying to get in why would I push you to get in when I myself I need to get in? 
<laughs> That's why the lame said he has been there for a long time seeking for somebody to put him in. Those people who were <laughs> that he was those people he was looking for them to put him in then themselves when they came and like, like they carried him and they were standing when there's <laughs> When, when, when they went like that, they carried him because he was lame. Hallelujah. So they had to probably carry him from home. I don't know. But anyway, they carried him. So they're holding with him like this and everybody who is waiting. When they see the angel come, shake, hey, drop. <laughs> Hallelujah. They didn't mind to drop him. So the 120 in the upper room, the Bible say, as they were awaiting, they were praying. But what were the 380 doing? Even if they're not, <laughs> even if there was not a Walmart, <laughs> what they were doing? I guarantee you that at least one out of the 380 were praying. I, I hear what I'm saying? At least one. But he was not where it was instructed to be. Oh, say, Lord, help me. Help me understand. Mm. The Bible says it is appointed a time for everything under the sun. So when that time is appointed and you miss that time, you will wait for the next appointment. For true, when you go for an appointment with somebody or with, uh, I don't know, whatever if you miss the appointment you will have to be rescheduled but you are not rescheduled because you came first you will be rescheduled after everybody has passed after you are you what i'm saying it's not because you made the appointment two months ago that those who came two months after they will skip them and put you because you did it two months ago no they will skip you also and they will put you after everybody The question is, are, are you? Are, <clears throat> the question is, are you willing to miss your appointment? <laughs> Hallelujah. What God wants to do in your life is for an appointed season. And he gives you an instruction. And what you ought to do is simply say, Lord, I am a... Lord Jesus, help me. Oh, God, help me. Say, Lord, help me. The Lord says, How many of you, whom by worrying about his life, has added a, a, a what? On, on his life? Like, like who? Among us, who can grow one air out of his head? Only one, not even two. Like, wipe out your hair and then be like, and see if one grows out. How come the one who is able to put on us the air and then grow us and help us and, and put us together, how come we are less busy for him, meaning involved for him and more involved in the things of the world. But at the same time, we want to receive the reward of him. Hey, between you and I, if we are partner and we have to do a work and we, we say, agree that we're going to do the work together, 
and then we show up and I sit down to just read or be on Facebook and you do the whole work and they give the money and I ask to have the same like you or more than you and then you decide not to give me more because I did not do anything and I decide to sue you because you did not give me more tell me when we arrive to the court who will be right hallelujah you have to make a personal decision to say hey there is nothing I can pursue in this life there is nothing I can pursue in this present life that will make me fulfill and at peace there is nothing however when I accomplish it by the will of God I find peace inside mm. I always give that testimony because it is by testimony we advance when the Lord called me for ministry he asked me to do nothing else but his ministry for 10 years and while he asked me to do so I had to eat food I had to eat ndole. I had to I had to eat miendo are you what I'm saying I had to eat food and if you know in the United States you you you, you, you have to do something to get something are you what I'm saying which is called a capitalism country in the United States how many of you were on salary it is rare to be on salary it's not impossible but rare it is mostly you are hourly you are paid on the hour hallelujah if they say you are qualified for full time it is called 40 hour a week if you work 10 hour a week you will see in your bank account what a 10 hour paycheck first of all you don't even see a 10 hour paycheck because the 10 hour you work for the cut on <laughs> hallelujah the states the state take the tax the 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 federal take the tax hallelujah now for those of you who have car you have to pay also your insurance hallelujah and then for those of you who have a home or a place to be you have to pay your mortgage or your invoice bill and for those of you who take water or drink water you also have to pay your water bill for those of you who shower amen if you don't shower i don't know but if you take shower hallelujah in the united states the shower water that comes out of you that goes in the drain you have to pay for it we call it sewer amen so when you finish to pay all of this out of your 10 hour paycheck even to pay bread for yourself <laughs> Lord Jesus say Lord help me <laughs> even to pay bread for yourself you have to go to dollar store to find a bread that costs 55 cents because if you go to Aldi or to Sam's Club you have to go to save a lot so you can save a lot because you receive your salary as a gross so you receive your salary in grosso modo but you actually got your salary, your salary, like, like when he entered your pocket. They call it net. You know why? Because you went through the net. En français, on dit, ils ont tamisé ton salaire. Hey! And after you receive that penny salary, you have to pay back to them what they gave to you 
And the only increase that you have is what? The increase that you have out of the salary is what? Is worries. Is worries. Because after you receive your salary, you say, how will I do? How shall I do? When you receive your salary, you don't say, God, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. When you see your salary, eh. <laughs> and yet, you toil, you sweat it. And then, when God says, My word says, Give your tithe and offering, you took one dollar, God take it. And then you took the $999. You pay your bills with that. And when you finish to do that, you go to God, back back to God. You say, Lord, bless me. The Lord say, okay, I'm going to multiply what you have given. So you multiply $1. Amen. You multiply it by two. <laughs> now you have $2. But while you have two dollars, you have ninety-nine percent, okay, of worries, because the two dollars will not solve you solve your problem, because you still have problem lining up. See how the world is doing to the people of God. See how the world is doing to the people of God. Say, Lord, help me. Say, Lord, help me. What God wants you to give is not your money. It's your heart. Hallelujah. In your heart are all your decisions. In your heart are all the thoughts of this life. If your heart is given unto God, your life your finances, your health will not be a problem because you know what to give to God. Are you, are you what I'm saying? And if also your heart is given to God, there is no room for spending time on worries. No. Oh, say, Lord, help me. Oh, God. Ten years. All I have seen was one instruction do everything that you do for for the lord and for free and the lord knows how many businesses did i help how many churches did i help how many ministries did i help the lord knows thousands Since you know me, have you ever heard that I was dead of uh, food? <laughs> God has been faithful simply because I follow the instruction. In the United States, every pastor, say pastor. <laughs> Every pastor, no pastor, pastor. Exactly, she got it. Every spaghetti who were appointed unto the church, hey, hey, hey. they all said, all of them. Including the one who were highly anointed. They say, brother, you are in the United States. All of us, we do ministry. But it's not like that. Yes. If you ever do what you think that God told you, how will you survive? And they're saying, be reasonable and use wisdom.
You see, if you know God spoke to you, either by dream, either by the word, and then you decide to do otherwise from what you know that God said. When the curse arrives, when the problem arrives, when the difficulty arrives, you will be on your own. You'll be frustrated, angry, hallelujah, worried. It will be your share. But today, there is an opportunity, an opportunity to shift things around that I know God has appointed for today. It's a choice. You grab it and you see the shift or you don't and you continue as you always did. A pull for God where he shift things is appointed for today. I say, say, Lord, help me. Say, Lord, help me. It is your heart God wants. It is your heart. It is your heart that the Lord wants. When your heart sets straight itself to the will of God, your body follows through. It is your heart the Lord wants. It is your heart that the Lord wants. have allowed too many things in your heart that has become like a uh, like a cluster are you what I'm saying what shall I eat what shall I wear what shall I do where shall I go where shall I sleep where another you have allowed that so much that you are cluttered But the Lord says, he gives rest to his anointed. He gives sleeps. He gives peace. But the devil steal your rest. Steal your peace. But if you continue yourself to allow the enemy to steal your peace and your rest, he will not give it back to you either. He will not. Because his purpose is just that. Kill, steal, destroy. That's all. That's the only thing he knows how to do. explain to you something that I think you don't often them see. Do you know that in the physical world there are people who literally wants to bless you but they are looking how you operate. Do, do you know that? Like, like they're sitting and they're looking like oh Lord Jesus. They're sitting and they're watching you and all they want to do is to bless you. There is a guy on Facebook is I think from Kenya or something someday. Every time I see him, every time I see him, in my spirit is how I will bless him. And I observe what he's doing. 
every time. There is a there is a a boy in a, a gentleman in Zambia. If we come to me, he will say, "I have this, 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 this. This is my difficulties." And you know what I do? When he tells me his problems, his difficulties, he will, he will tell me, for instance, "I need one thousand." And I will give him four thousand to to go give to his friend to solve the problem of his friend. But he came to explain his problem. I you what I'm saying. And instead of giving to him for his problem, I give him four times to go give to his friend to see what he will do. To see whether he will rejoice into the solving, into being a, a channel to solve the issue of his friend who does not know me, who never saw me, who has no idea who I, who I am. And based upon his behavior, because people can fake and you will know they're fake. Based upon his behavior, I will give him twice what he gave to his friend. Now, as a human being, I literally observe people in order to bless them. Imagine God. Are you what I'm saying? The Bible says he is the rewarder of those who so you seek him. But it says when you do seek him diligently. Hallelujah. Eh? Uh -huh, with all your heart. And you see, diligently is how, how long? <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? That's a problem. Because you're thinking yourself, I have done this for the Lord for so long. And then you're thinking you have done it. And now someday over there, you start now changing a little bit. And then you think, if because I have done so much, I will certainly receive the reward. No. Diligently is not for 25 years. And then finally, the 25 years and first day, you say, okay, now I'm, uh, I'm too tired. Uh, are you following what I'm saying? There's a problem. You see God diligently, He bless you, and finally the blessing becomes <laughs> a problem. You, you know what I'm saying? There was a lady uh, in, in my country, in Ivory Coast, they always go to church to have a, a husband all the time. And over there, being married is like a, I don't know, it's like a, I don't know how I describe it. It's like having seen Jesus. It's of a great value. Even if your husband is a thief, like I have to say you are married. No, for real. It's a great value. The day of your wedding, that day, it's like you have become the queen of England. So everybody who come to your... There was a video, a lady, I think was in Nigeria or something. They were doing the wedding and they called the husband to come dance with the, the, the wife. Literally. The wife is standing waiting for the husband. The husband now is coming on the step of the song, on the pace of the song. And another lady come out of the... The, the crowd and she comes to block the husband and dance with him so okay they thought it was just a matter of her you know no 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 a matter of just something quick you know she tried to dance and go she danced with the husband the wife is over there she's here the husband is here she danced with the husband and she moved herself and she turned herself so after about 30 seconds the people said 
Let the husband go now. She won't. So the MC came, tried to pull her, and she's like this. <laughs> now it's becoming clear that it's not just a lady who just wanted to dance a little bit and go down. And she continues. Two more ladies, mama lady came. They tried, yes, they tried to pull her. She pushed them. And then she with the husband. Ah. So they got the MC on the microphone. Please, go. Mm -mm. Now, everybody was now turning around. But let the husband go. Mm -mm. She said that day of marriage, she will be married. <laughs> She does not care that uh, he has a wife over there. She said, hey, right here, I look for you for long. Now there is an opportunity for marriage and I will let you go for another person. She, I will take you. Can you imagine? So how wicked he was, she did not care at all. She hijacked the husband. So marriage is like something very something in my country now the lady gets married after the man of god pray she received the grace and before to be married she has been following and going to church and participating in church for like uh, five years ten years and the day she's married the next sunday she's not at church one month after she's not there two months after she's not there now the uh, the buzzer call her uh, sister Akisi, uh, where where are you? Uh, my husband every Sunday he likes to eat futu. Uh, I cannot come because I have to cook the futu for him. So you pray for five years to get the husband. Now you got the husband, you forgot God. No, you know, he does not like this. He does not like that. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. How much your heart is circumcised for the Lord. Because you will see, wherever you at, you will be that instrument in the life of somebody. Because your heart is so much for the Lord that you cannot see somebody in, you know, in a, I don't know, without giving to the person the life of Christ. So why are you looking for the reward from the Lord? He says he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Here's the thing. When he rewards you, he does it without without sorrow how many of you want to be rewarded without sorrow <laughs> hallelujah you are not called to become a slave of pharaoh uh -uh. you are called to get out of pharaoh so you become a instrument of god You are appointed to become an instrument of God. A lady one time called me, no, not a lady, a company, they, they made a auto call. And it was like a for, for the guys. Is that guys? Right, guys. And... Uh, They send the bill on the 2nd of May. And on the 20th of May, I received a robocall. And I was right in the midst of uh, important things. So I pick up the call. It's a robocall telling me, ah, yeah, you have a bill that was come on the 2nd of May. I said, hey. So I call back the company. Listen carefully. I called back the company. And I told them, first and foremost, have you ever seen in my account 
a uh, Jew or are you, like, is there anything I owe you for all these eight years? Why are you making a robocall to my phone? And I say, I do not want to receive any more robocall no more for any bill. And she said, <laughs> she said, no, this is the way it goes because the bill came the 2nd of May and the 20th of May you haven't paid for. I said, but we seen on me, right? She said, yes. But she said, well, it's because you haven't paid yet that uh, the robocall came out. I said, but I do no longer want to receive a robocall. If you want to call, take your phone, call me. I do not want to receive any more robocall because when you put my phone number in the robocall list, it goes out to all the scammers. So I do not want to be part of that system. So I instruct the lady and she argues. And she said, no, you will be inside and we will leave you inside. Okay. So I call the Maryland um, uh, attorney. What was it like? Uh, general attorney. Attorney general. I said, this is the company who has my number in their robocall list. And I want them to cease and desist. The next day, you call them. Now imagine, she heard a guy with an accent who sounds like an African. No, no, for real. Telling her what she ought to do with her business. And she wasn't happy about it. But because I knew the right and the, what is that? the rules, I enforced the rules regardless of whether she wants or not. That's how you are. If you don't know the rule that God has placed on you for you to operate in this world, you will be defrauded. Are you know what I'm saying? I oftentimes say you got to think like a ruler. My wife, when they hire her the first time, they told her, listen, you have to work Monday, Tuesday, what? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and sometimes Saturday. And sometimes <laughs> Sunday. And then she came to tell me, ah, honey, this is the situation. I said, go tell your boss that I say. <laughs> if you cannot say, just tell her that your husband says, literally, operate like a ruler. So she went to her boss. She said, my husband says, <laughs> I cannot work this day, this day, this day. And if I work this day, this day, this day, I cannot work past this hour. Now, think about it one, one moment. You are being hired, okay? So you have the impression that they, they give you a favor. That's a world. Literally. You have the impression that they give you a favor. So because they are the one hiring you, you come like this. Hey, patron. <laughs> I, I, are you what I'm saying? So they play on your mind making you think that uh, you are the one who receive a favor and an opportunity no that's not true so i told my wife you are not an employee hallelujah you are giving professional services shift your mind shift your thinking so you tell them when where are you want to work and how much you want to get. So, eventually, the people hiring, the, the upset and they never probably or, or not often met people like this. And somebody who tell you that my husband says, ah. <laughs> can't you have decision for yourself? 
I mean, I noticed this. She ended up working less and being paid more. Is what I mean? She ended up working less and being paid more. And the day she doesn't want to go to work, they still pay her anyway. To the point that God has to put to shut down the whole, the whole uh, facility, and they pay her for three months without going to work. Uh, you, you must know who you are. No, I, I'm serious. You must know who you are. If you don't enforce the rule, they will play with you because you have been set free to worship God. Are you following what I'm saying? Not to be under the rule of the enemy. Oppressed by the enemy. And now, you do more by telling me how much you get. You feel what I'm saying? And you toil more, but when you get, it goes straight back to the bills. And the only thing that is left for you is worries. Do you truly really believe that's how God intended for you to be blessed? Honestly. Like, like, do you see this as normal? He says, you shall be at the head and not at the tail. He said, you shall lend and not borrow. So what if he says it's not what is in your life? Then it means there is something that is not functioning as he intended. And since he's a rewarder, amen, of those who what diligently seek him, when there is something else that calls you to diligently not seek him, then you must know there is something that is taking away your reward. You must enforce it. You must enforce. Let me tell you this thing. For those of you who ever work in the HR department, the way it works is that you have so many candidates that you have to choose from for one position. And oftentimes, all the candidates are equally qualified. And the HR or the recruiter, when you come in, he will, after he has looked through all the, um, the curriculum, the resume, he will now look on the expression of the person, how the person express himself, how he act and react and so forth. And sometimes they ask you questions and they say, well, you are in the place and there is a problem between those two people. What would you do? So they ask you like a similarity, I mean simulation just to see how you function, you will react and so forth. And at the end of the day, they find themselves with four potential candidates and all of them are equally capable. But they have to disqualify at least three and retain one. What do you think they base themselves off to disqualify? They will retain the one who can sacrifice for them while it's paid less. Let me repeat again. You work Monday through Sunday. Your boss receives money. You are still paid less. Are you what I'm saying? They will retain you. Because they will ask you, are you available all the time? And you're thinking, this is my opportunity I have been looking for. And yet, they're looking at you as a qualified. But you don't see yourself as a qualified. You see yourself as giving an opportunity. With God, he calls you without qualification. In this world, it's because you qualify that they call you. And when you understand that, 
you start now saying, listen, I can do this, 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 not this, 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 not that, 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 and this is how much I want, and this is how far I can go, period. And you without knowing, many of the recruiter will also hire somebody who has a strong stance. All this is about how you allow yourself in the pool of God to be wet in, to be anointed for, and to be utilized for His glory without being oppressed by the world. So when you give your heart to Christ, there are things you don't allow the world to do to you. <laughs> Amen. Have you ever seen the child of the Queen of England being treated like fairly, unfairly? If they do, they will respond to it. And because she's a child of the Queen of England, when she comes in, she's given favor. But so if God can give you favor, why would you allow the world to oppress you to the point now you are becoming oppressed and oppressed and oppressed? Worried for everything. I said worried for everything. By the time you're feeling to worry, your problem actually did not go down. Amen? Your problem only actually became worse because now you yourself, you became a problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why I'm encouraging you. That today, you have to make a shift decision. You got to make a shift decision. Because the Lord is setting you up so that you'll be able to be utilized as an instrument to fulfill his purpose. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. No one can follow me except he die. Hallelujah. No one can follow me except he die to himself and pick up his cross. Which cross are you ready to pick up just because you want to honor God? Remember, no one can bless you except God has appointed that blessing. And no one can curse you except God has allowed it. The people of God who came through the wilderness, when the enemy wanted to curse them, what happened? They hire an expert cursor to say, come do your work. He said, listen, even me, Balaam, who had a PhD in cursing. That one, I cannot curse. Because on that one, if I curse, I die. Oh, Lord Jesus, say, Lord, help me. Listen carefully, people of God. These are people who were not even in the land. Meaning they were looking like a, like a, like, 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 a, like, 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 yeah, they were looking like nothing. They came out of Egypt. They are wandering in the desert. So you are already in the desert. You don't look like something. But even though they do not look like something, they do not have buildings. They do not have homes. All they had was tents. And the same clothes they've been wearing for 40 years. <laughs> Hallelujah. They do not look like anything greater. 
But when the enemy wanted to curse them into the difficulties, listen carefully. The enemy says, where they are right now, they are blessed. Are you following me? They already has received a seal of blessing. So the circumstances that they were in did not define that they were cursed. It was still the blessed of the Lord. Are you following? Say my circumstances don't define my life. It is the hand of God that blesses me, that appoints me for his success. They were in circumstances of wilderness. They had no building. They had no establishment. They had no land. But they were called the blessed of the Lord. So when the enemy has hired a magician, a witch, to curse them, it was because they knew they were blessed of the Lord. So they wanted to reverse it. So they will remain in the wilderness. Are you following? But that enemy has even to hear from God. Can you imagine? God tells to your enemy, they not have your finger on my anointed. You know the story of Abraham. The king took his wife. The day he took that wife, the same night, God himself came in his dream. He said, as you're hearing me, it's because you're dead. For you are a dead man. If you want to wake up out of your bed, agree with me right here. That you're going to return the wife and bless my... Ah! Oh, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord, help me. Oh, say, Lord, help me. Look how Abraham did not even see himself as an element of glory of God. Can you imagine? The great Abraham, did, all he saw was, ah, if I don't bend to their request, they're going to finish me. Mm. But you see, God did not allow it to last. Hallelujah. God did not allow it to last because he has a greater purpose through Abraham than the demon had. So he did not allow it to last. Regardless of the weakness of Abraham, he sought God diligently. Are you following me? And because of that, God rewarded him also. Hallelujah. Even when he was afraid for his life, God did not abandon him because Abraham sought God diligently. He said, for I know my friend Abraham, he will keep. Hallelujah. And because of that, God did not allow the enemy to take from him. But what God did is after the enemy has seized his property, God now obligates the enemy to give him more. Ah. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Lord God. Don't think that those things happen only in the Bible. No, it happens today. And I can tell you, I am a witness. A living witness. 
where people who rose against me and really tried to hurt me, they had to pay me back and pay me back many times. At the point, for those of you who knows it, there is something that is called the double and double anointing. Came a point, whatever I buy, whatever I buy, they send it back to me with my money on it and they send something else on it and I have to tell them I already received the product. I do not need the other one. And they said, no, please keep it. We're going to refund you and we're going <laughs> to... Uh, he, 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 in the beginning, it was happening, and I thought it was a mistake. So I made sure to get the people to let them know, hey, listen, is it? No. Literally, I will buy something they sent to me, and they will tell me we're going to send again and bless you. So I was thinking, absolutely, it has to be a mistake. But when the one, two, hundred, two hundred times happened, then I understood it was not a mistake. Because see, while I was seeking God diligently to do his work for free, he was putting in people's heart to bless me for free. I remember this one. I bought it. And I sent them a message saying, it is like a wibbling. So I want them to take it back so that uh, I will buy something else. So I took the video and I sent to them. You know what they did? They say, keep it. Not only keep it, but we're gonna refund you the money and they sent a second one. I was the one who said, listen, it's enough. When the guy came here, I said, I don't want to take it. Please send it back. <laughs> and eventually he told me, but why you did not keep it? Just, you keep it. <laughs> they said, keep it. We bless you. I can't. I cannot tell you how many times did the Lord has again and 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 again demonstrated in my life what he said in the word. So the disciple says we are eyewitness. Amen. So I am an eyewitness telling you that there is nothing in worries. There is zero in worries. And sing yourself. You are to see yourself as the Lord sees you. He says he will gather the riches of the Give your heart to Christ. Give your heart to Christ. Not just your time, but your heart. And see him taking you out of the predicament. And see you see him giving you like a peace. tell you when something is too difficult that you don't know what to do with that just first of all you don't know what to do with that right so just leave it alone leave it alone because by worrying about it does not make you know what to do with that even in the world this principle is applied in businesses when you don't know what to do with a, a contract or something you step back 
to say, okay, how I'm going to look into it and work with that. And come out with the best proposal. I encourage you again. Hear my voice. And let not the trick of the enemy prevent you to enter the rest and the blessings of Christ. Your value is not based upon what people said. Because even though the children of Israel were not in the proper place, still the demons have recognized that they were untouchable. Even when Joseph was sold as a slave, the demons in Potiphar recognized that because of him, everything that he had was prosperous. Hallelujah. And the Bible wrote it clear in the word of God that because of Joseph, everything in the house of Potiphar was prosperous. So I pray thee, refuse, refuse to be a byproduct of this world. Refuse to let your soul soak in worries. Refuse to let your soul become a, a, a tool of the enemy and then have you capped, and, and, I mean caught into worries. The Lord says, do not worry. He says, worry for nothing. Worry for nothing. Say it again. Worry for nothing. Got to tell to your soul. Got to tell my soul, I commend you, worry for nothing. My soul, I commend you, worry for nothing. When I go for the baptism, man. But remember, whatever baptism that you have need of, you might ask the Lord. Because there is a pool being stirred up. There is a place being appointed. So today, whatever that is the baptism that you need, whether it is the baptism that you, whether it is the anointing, whether it is the gifts, whether it's the talent, whether it's the ideas, whether it is the fire, whatever that is, if it's all of it also, hallelujah. Whatever that is, you must ask the Lord to not let you go out of this place without having it pour out in you and through you. Stand up, please. You want to follow after me? So we can sing together this. song simply says he's seated on high
be seated on high and holy is his mighty name. It says, my whole body, my whole soul, all of me, worship him, adore him. Give him honor. For he is holy. The Lord of the armies, the Lord of hosts. And that's why his mighty name is holy. The Seigneur is Saint. L'Éternel est saint. Et dans sa sainteté, il nous appelle à changer et à être transformé. The Lord is holy. He is holy. And his, in his holiness, he's calling on to us to be transformed and to be changed. He's calling each one of us to be transformed into the likeness of him. For he said, let the same mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in thee. So I pray that each one of us will not come out of this particular place appointed for this day without receiving the benefit of your soul. Lord, I call for heaven to appoint today as a token of your testimony. As a token of your testimony the fire upon every sacrifice present in this place. That you pour out upon each one of us your fire. That you pour out upon each one of us the dimension and a great measure of your spirit. Of your wisdom. Of your knowledge. Of your peace your anointing let it be flowing inside of each one of us from the top of our head to the very bottom of our feet do it again
as we are lifting up our voices to praise and to worship him we want to remember that he is holy and that he is calling us onto his holiness and in his holiness we are separated we are put apart set apart for his goodness and his good glory
Sun.